Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm talking about pulling data from our pack to writing data to a file and reading data from a file. Okay, so you have packages that are incorporated into base R, and those packages contain data we can access. So data cards, and when you do that, you get this weird card promise. But if you click on it, you actually get it looking like a real data frame. And that uh, data frame with 50 activations that, ex that extends past what you can see. Okay? So, it's the card data. I can name it a different data frame to get. Nope. Oh. oh, I'm having fun now. Okay. Then we don't have to deal with that weird promise data frame. But I think that's more relevant. If I didn't click it and have it print and be weird so data card and then you have that weird promise thing and I don't know why it does that I wish I didn't but if you just pull that from yep and then it fixes it okay card data we can get the first five rows You can also do the same thing with the head function. Not that that really matters. It's not the interesting bit of trivia. N is the number of rows you want from the top. For some reason, I thought you might want to know that. Okay. So in, instead of pulling stuff from base R, we can also pull data from packaging. Perhaps more exciting, like, and I didn't make sure I, I had the type package, and that's a mistake I made. If that didn't take too long, that should be good. Okay, so, and we're also going to be talking about getting and changing your working directory in a minute. Oh goodness, this might be taking longer than I wanted it to. Um, okay. Sorry for that. So, library site. Okay. And when you library it, you get that warning. That doesn't matter at all. It's a means that function and that operator are conflicting with another function and operator in the ttplot2 package. You can just ignore those pretty much. Okay, so the type package has a data set called BFI. And I I frequently like using this data set. We get that weird BFI promise thing. I can either click on it and it would work fine. Or I can just do side data and BFI. That's my preference. It doesn't really matter. So you can get data from packages, just like you can get data from base R packages. There's no functional difference. You just have to library the packages and then have them installed before you use them. Okay? Now, something I've alluded to a few times is the working directory. So, your working directory is the default place or saved and retrieved file from. So, you can, you can see your working directory right here. When you hit file, this is everything in your working directory. 
And I think this means my working directory is home. Get WD. Home, Michael. And this is looking different for me than it would for you because I'm running Linux. And that's of course you're running Linux and it's looking as nice as like it should run for you. You can also set your working directory. So let's say I want my working directory to be a sub 40 here. So slash home slash Michael and slash document. Why not? Document. Okay, and now I'll get working directory again. And now my working directory is my document folder instead of my home folder. I'm going to go ahead and set that back. If I don't, I'm going to end up saving stuff where I don't want it to be. Um, Michael. Okay. So, to set your working directory, or see what your working directory is, you get get working directory and set working directory to figure that out. A lot of problems are caused when you have, when you're trying to read data into R that's not in your working directory. That's a big problem, and the way to solve that problem is to make sure that all your data is in your working directory, or be prepared to specify the directory your data is contained in. Although I wouldn't really do that, I'd just put it in my working directory. But that's your preference, and it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's get to writing file. I prematurely deleted the side data, and that's fine. So data BFI. So it doesn't matter. So I just do write DFP. BFI, comma, BFI dot TSV. Okay, so some points about this. TSV file or a comma separated value file. It's a very common way of storing data. It's a very easy way of storing data. It's much less, it's much simpler than like a Excel spreadsheet type file. It, it's great for storing basically data frames. It, it's not a problem. You don't and you don't have to deal with the proprietary nature of a Excel document if you just want to move it around between computers. So I very often write CSV file. Now the first argument is the data frame. Or the matrix, whatever, or the, or the factor. It you can write a factor in the same way. So the first argument is the variable in the environment, whatever that is. The second argument, the name. You always have to include .tsv. If you do not include .tsv, your file system will not recognize it properly. It will be it, it would just read file and then it won't open right and you're going to really regret that. Okay. So I hit the right TSV and then we see right here a TSV file, VFI, was created on my computer. Okay. So we're going to do the inverse of that and import the CSV file into R. Import it. Equal read dot CSV. And the only argument here is the name of the CSV. The important part is that you have the file in your working directory. If you don't have the file in your working directory, it just won't show up and you're going to be really frustrated. The like, data imported, one through five, one through three. 
Okay, did that wrote the file and then read the file. You can also save your environment. Your environment being all the variables you've created. R will do this automatically when you try to close R Studio. Actually, R Studio would do this automatically when you close R Studio. R doesn't do anything like that. That's an R Studio thing. But you can do both things with uh, the R code. You can save the, the environment and load the environment, which will be done automatically when you close R Studio and open R Studio. Okay. So that's the end of this section. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about plotting. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.